Look at that view. That is unbelievable. Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. This morning in camp, we are enjoying a delicious breakfast of mom's famous French toast. We are especially enjoying the calm and quiet surroundings because when we arrived yesterday, it was a completely different story. No sooner had we set up camp and settled in and the wind started blowing fiercely, whipping up the red sand of the desert around us. It was a good test for our new JXL campers, and we retreated to the jeeps to wait out the windstorm. Windstorms are fairly common in the desert during the springtime, but just as quickly as this one arrived, it was gone, and we were back to the quiet, calm, and serene beauty of our surroundings. Sit it on it, or else the sparks won't do much. Got me good tender, huh? Pretty good to me. Yeah,
morning. We had a wonderful time in Valley of the Gods. Found a good camp spot after the wind cleared up. Uh, that wind was pretty, pretty nasty, but we have these JXLs now. And it's precisely for that reason, we're able to kind of hunker down inside, let the wind blow right over us. And we were comfortable and we could work on our laptops, whatever else we were doing. Now we are heading up the, the rest of the BDR up towards Moab. All right, guys, so we're gonna be leaving camp with our mother riding Pete's bike. She's gonna be trying it again. She's been practicing for the past couple months. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, so just um, put it into first gear. Okay, you're in first gear now. Okay, it's a rec loose, so you can let go of the clutch and it won't stall. See, so I would, you don't have to worry about shifting, so you can start on whatever foot you want, right? You got it. You've done it before. You got it, Ma. Once you start moving, like this is the only harder part, but you've gone up harder hills than this, so. Okay, just stay in first gear and you can just cruise up this. If you want, you can stand up if that makes you feel better. Just cruise up. Kind of maybe stick to the left. And don't worry about going over bumps. You can just crawl over them. Stop right up here for you. Yeah, Ma! Awesome! Okay, pull up to the road and you can stop there. Remember, you don't have to hold in the clutch or anything if you're in first gear. You can just come to a stop. So just go at your pace, whatever you're comfortable with. So usually once you're about 15 or 17 is a good time to switch, but it's really just listening to the engine. When it starts revving higher, you can shift up, and then when it starts bogging, you shift down. But usually it's a good rule, just if you're anything above 17, you can usually shift into second gear. And then third gear is when you're about 25 to 30. At least with this gearing. So Ma, as well, you might feel a little bit different on Peter's bike than mine because of his handlebars. But if, if that becomes uncomfortable at any point, you can also switch and I can ride that one. I'll, you can ride on the inside, I'll ride on the outside so I can turn into the car. We got a nice open road though. Awesome, Ma. Doing great. You're doing awesome, Ma. If you ever get tired or want to pull over or do anything, just let me know as well. Here we can pull over. I got my blinker on, so you're good. It's okay. You're yeah, okay. Here, this is a good time to practice picking up a bike again. It's all in your legs, don't use your back. And you're pushing kind of backwards, not up. Yeah. Okay, now your tire's touching. Awesome. 
Awesome. Sweet, ma. Okay, now that you're holding there, you can kick down the kickstand. Sweet. You did it. Now we can take a breather while we wait for the Jeeps. <laughs> no, that was awesome. That was great. I, I, we, me and Pete both did that a thousand times when we starting. Yeah. So remember? Yeah. That was awesome, huh? All right, so we're at the end of the trail. What an incredible experience to ride alongside my son, Daniel, and uh, drive part of the BDR here. It was so much fun, and my goodness, you pay attention to so much more than when you're in a vehicle. I can understand why they love it. Lots and lots of practice ahead for me, that's for sure, and I just can't wait to learn more and um, do more trails. All right, that was fun getting to ride with Mom for a bit, but now we're finally heading up that road into the Moki Dugway, which we've been trying to do for a long time now, so. Today, we are taking the Moki Dugway to the top of the Mesa ahead. This breathtaking road winds 1,200 feet from bottom to top on three miles of graded gravel at a steep 11% grade. Moki is a local term for the ancient Puebloan people who inhabited the Colorado Plateau many years ago. And Dugway is a term used to describe a roadway carved into a hillside.
The Moki Dugway was built in the 1950s by Texas Zinc Minerals as a route for ore trucks hauling minerals from Cedar Mesa to a processing mill near Mexican Hat. We have been in this area several times over the years, and each time the dugway was closed due to rock slides and road repairs. But this time, we are going to make our way up the switchbacks to the top, where we will continue our journey northward to the Canadian border. I didn't know this was gravel though. I thought it was pavement. I mean, it's pavement again now, but. I, I keep looking over at the view, but then I get that dizzy feeling, you know? I'm not scared of heights, it's just... Ugh. The Jeep's already up, so... Look at that view. That is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I can't believe that. That's so gorgeous. Are you sure they're ahead? What a crazy road. That was insane, so pretty 
though. But yeah, with the dust, it didn't help. <laughs> did the Moki Dugway that is quite the uh, I didn't realize it was gravel but what a bunch of switchbacks getting you that much elevation in such a short amount of time it's one you want to take your time on there's no guardrail almost the whole way up or down there's no guardrail on the cliff side so make sure your brakes are in good shape if you're going down that and uh, just take your time because it's a very loose gravel all right so we're doing a little piece of pavement here and then we're going to be jumping onto a trail soon So if you're camping in here, you need a permit. Shouldn't be, it's all BLM. All right, let's air down and get on the trail. Three. All right, so I noticed when we pulled onto this BDR road that my SD was full. So I hope we got footage of coming up the Mokey Dugway and stuff, but. We'll just have to wait and see until we're editing how much of the footage actually worked out. So yeah, we're officially on the Utah BDR.
This is cool. Wow, this looks like Australia. Stuff so amazing in here. Really makes you want to camp and explore this area. <laughs> Stuff's like pavement. You can just wheelie off of those rocks so easy. This is crazy. So apparently a lot of this, remember that town Bluff? So it was obviously, it was settled by a big wagon train, I think out of Salt Lake City. Yeah, remember in Bluff we went to, uh, there was that like little um, like Pioneer Museum. The Pioneer Museum and there's all the cabins everywhere and wagons and stuff. Yeah way back in the day, it was like two and a half years ago, maybe three. And the guy was telling us, cause we had the blue Jeep back then. He's like, you guys could go on their like actual track that they made. This is the track, or at least part of it. It's crazy to think. Yeah, they carved a path out of the wilderness with this stuff and, you know, drove a whole wagon train of people to go settle in that place. They made it. Pretty cool that we get to drive along it. Yeah, totally. I'm, that was really cool because that's connecting like two or three years ago. We went to that spot and heard of this and was like, man, one day that'd be really cool. And then that sign was just saying, hey, this is a part of the group that settled bluff. So we're like, oh, wow, that's, that's the place. This is the road. That was a six month trip. And there was one section, maybe further on towards Bluff, that uh, they had to blow through like dynamite a road down this cliff. And it's just the most insane story. Like after finally building all these roads down this, or this road down a cliff, blasting their way, they had to use a team or two of uh, horses on wagons locked with the brakes locked up at the top of the hill and then they had a pulley system lowering down each wagon with a horse and family in it horses and family because if they just tried to go down it it was steep enough that the weight of the wagon would probably just push the donkey or like mule or horses straight down the hill like right off their feet and just they go flying down the hill so didn't they have like all the families hanging onto ropes sliding down the hill behind them? No, so the last guy, I think the engineer himself, who, like one of the guys on the trip was a, an engineer of some kind and he helped blast the road and I think he set up the pulley system and then his family was the last one down because his wagon was up pulling everyone else's down, right? Right. So, so then when he had to go down, he had no one pulling his wagon. So of course someone has to drive it. So he had to drive it, which is really dangerous being on the wagon but his wife and kids and I don't know who else, maybe his, you know, his, he had some sons or something, tied ropes to themselves and held, tried to hold the wagon up, like off of the horses as they're going down, walking behind them. But of course, like probably at some point just started rolling pretty fast and they all got dragged down a part of it and he couldn't stop anything. So when they got to the bottom, they were all scratched up. They're pulling it down. Even the wife and everything, which is pretty hardcore. Yeah, and nowadays we just drive those trails for fun. Yep. But they went on to Settle Bluff and you can still see the things and it's a, it's a great town. So the boys go ahead. 
ahead, I don't know how many miles ahead they get, quite a bit usually, and then by the time we get there, they're relaxing, sitting by their bikes. Hey, How's it going? Good. good. Nice trail, huh? Oh, it's beauty. And this being that, uh, like those settlers from Salt Lake City, right? To Bluff? I think they'll Escalante to Bluff or something. But yeah, they had it, to isn't it this snow? Whatever road they had to carve this out with their wagon train. It's crazy. I was talking about it a minute ago. Neat. You guys want to go ahead or kept, let us get we'll catch up? Dan's in the trailer right now. He's grabbing a tuna, I think. Love you. Love you, Mark. Back out. I wonder if you got faulty uh, tubes. Both of them are broken now. But that's so weird because you bought them because they're supposed to last. But... Ultra heavy duty tubes. It's definitely from the stem. You see? Yeah. It's not from the valve, like from the uh, inner core of it. It's from like right here. I can see it with the dust. Yeah, it's from the like back end of the stem. It's just dumping right back out. Two. Yeah. So the uh, weirdest thing happened. They, the boys got to the end of the trail here. They were just hanging out, waiting for the jeeps, and then Pete's rear tires started to deflate. So. They've got these ultra heavy duty tubes that they bought um, and they're having more problems. That's the second one down now uh, with the regular standard tubes. You guys went through thousands of miles of mountain trails in Colorado and never had a problem. Yeah, I don't know why. They're Michelin ultra heavy duty tubes. I was literally just sitting there. It's been fine since we put them on and then it just, I just heard it deflate. It just kind of sounded like, I don't, it didn't sound like something popped, but something moved and then it just, well, they're down right when I, like a few minutes after I stopped here too. Yeah, we had been, we were just chilling. We're going all day and it was totally fine and I just. So when they replaced Dan's, they just put a normal tube in there? They put a normal one in his now, yeah. yeah. I don't even know what kind. But Might have to go back to the normal tubes, the light duty. Who knows, we're just gonna have to play around with it, but it illustrates how important it is to have Backups. tire changing tools, spare tubes and all that kind of stuff, which. Uh, we have tire changing tools, but. <laughs> And also to be able to change a, a rear tire, especially a stiff one like that, is a huge Free ply. Uh, we tried it, me jumping on the tool, Pete trying to work the tool, and we couldn't budge it. We had to take it in. But if you know any tricks, let us know. But anyway, we are learning a lot about uh, long, long distance travel on bikes, and that's something we want to get really good at. We're going to put the hitch on. It's quite convenient that we're not. We made it to the, a paved road, so yeah. we're going to load one of the bikes. One of the guys will drive and we'll head up somewhere where we can get it repaired. And the valve stem is stuck through the aluminum so it'll rip or tear that bit of rubber. In Dan's case, it's sheared it right off. 
So yeah. let's, so oh, this little uh, add-on oh. here is a, a bolt that you can tighten in it. It basically pinches in the uh, the bead of the tube, oh. so then that can't happen. So even if you're running lower tire pressures, like below 20 is what he said, and we definitely were running below 20, it'll help uh, hold your bead in place. Nice. Well, hopefully that'll solve the issue. Yeah. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road. Good job, guys.